Dear most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful Sabbath day you've given us, and we thank you for one more, do, one more day closer to your Son coming to bring us home. Guide us in a special way that your light would shine through each one of us to a falling world out there in the darkness. Lord, we have the message to open the light so that they can see you and everything that's going on around them. Help us to be worthy to be your sons and daughters in this world around us, and help us to bring one more soul safely to your throne of grace. Amen. Our opening song this morning is number 516. All the way my Savior leads me, 516. everyone. So good to see you all here this morning. Isn't this kind of a bummer though? We haven't had a rain and well, we, we definitely need a rain but it's one of those things where praise the Lord for the garden hose. Our offering this morning is Michigan Advance Partners. A Bible verse is Psalms 36 9. I don't know if you want to turn there. It's very short. Psalms 36 9. Just one line, for with you is the fountain of life. In your light, we see light. Praise his name. The first Flint church was welcoming a new pastor, and they were really pleased because the Lord has blessed them with a facility with a lot of different, well, they have the church, they have the sanctuary there, they have the the, um, the kitchen, they have other, other areas and classrooms. Uh, the, it's, it's just a perfect place for outreach. And they're really pleased and they were welcoming a new pastor. And the head elder says, Pastor, if there's anything in this church that you would like to change, what would that be? He said, well, it seems like the lighting in this church is just not quite adequate enough. He felt he had to squint really hard to be able to read the, the, 
the writing on a, on a piece of paper. And they realized that they just got accustomed to that light. They didn't realize that it wasn't really up to par. So they decided, they voted on taking a vote, and sure enough, they're gonna replace all the lights in the entire facility. And the cost that came up, the cheapest bid was over $22,000. They needed help from MAP. They applied for help, they got the help, they put in the, the lights, MAP, not that long before that, helped them with the parking lot, so they didn't know if they could apply and get help with the lights but they did get help with their lights. And it's one of those things where all of Michigan is so blessed to have MAP as a, as a partner at the conference level. They helped us several times here, and they'll help us again if we just have a request and a need. Will the deacons please come forward? Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful Sabbath day. We thank you for all that you do for us. We ask that you'll bless the giver and those that are unable to give, Lord. And we thank you and we praise you that we are your children, Lord, and that you are our God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. It's now time for family prayer. If, if you want to come and kneel before the throne of grace up here, you're welcome to. And if you can't, kneel as best you can where you're at. Dear most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for another beautiful Sabbath day you provided for us. And we thank you for the fellowship that we receive here. Lord, in a special way, let your son's light shine through us to a fallen world around us and help us to be that beacon of light that will safely bring more people to your throne of grace in heaven. We ask that you watch over our church family, Lord. Some of them are ill and aren't able to come here, but also for our truck driver friends that are out on the road delivering goods that help us to have the, the goods and services and food that we richly need. But we most of all thank for you for your son Jesus, who took and shed his blood so that each one of us could have a time to be with you in heaven. Lord, guide us today and the rest of the time ahead. Help us to reach one more soul for your son and help us to be your overcoming family. Amen. Our prayer, O oh Lord, incline the dear to us and grant us thy peace. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Scripture for today is found in Psalms 32, verses 8 through 11. And it says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like the horse or like 
the mule, which had no understanding, which must be harnessed with bit and bridle, else they will not come near you. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he who trusts in the Lord, mercy shall surround him. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice your righteousness, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. It's now time for children's story. What we do with the money from the children's story is any youth ministries we have in the church, the money goes towards supplying all we need for that. I'll tell you one out of my out of my head. Melissa, remind me to take that home and fix it. Okay. Have you guys been out walking around and looking at the trees that are around your yard at Grandma and Grandpa's? You ever notice what happens when the leaves come on the trees? Yeah. What happens? They go green. What else happens in some of those trees? You see anything special? A big surprise? You don't? What about the blossoms? The beautiful blossoms that come on the trees. And one, one blossom might be for an apple tree. One could be for a pear. Or some of them are just peaches too. Some of them are just beautiful flowers that God put there for us. But each one of them has a special purpose because the tree needs those to bring nutrients to itself so it can continue to grow. I have some trees in my yard and, and I watch them. Some of them are just now putting leaves on. They should have been in leaves at least a month and a half ago. But they're just now coming on. And Alice said maybe it's because there's lots of rocks in the ground over the, where these trees are growing, and they're not getting the nutrients or the heat from the ground that they need to grow. So maybe she's right. Maybe God give her the answer to it. What do you like the best about those blossoms on the trees after they go away? Do you watch them grow? You get a fruit on there and an apple starts growing or a peach. Some of them got plums. But where did these come from? Jesus. Jesus. Each one of those seeds is just like young boys and girls. Your special seeds that God planted in your mother's womb. And you're coming about, and it's time when you grow up to do what? Do you share that seed? Have grandpa cut open one of the apples that comes off the apple tree. And he can show you something special on that apple if, he, if you've never seen it before. You cut it a certain way, and what's in the middle? Seeds. There's seeds, but something else. There's a star in there. The seeds are in that seed. But Jesus is the one that provided them. And he, each one of us has seeds within ourselves, and we need to go out and plant them with our friends in school, or maybe somebody at the supermarket that we see. It's because of God's love in us that we can do that. You think about doing that this week? Yes, sir. Okay. 
One of you want to say a prayer or you want me to? I will. You will? Okay, here you go. Dear Jesus, help hope we have a good day and amen. Done. <laughs> Thank you. I'm out. Welcome everybody today. As our lesson brought out at Sabbath School this morning, it's talking about confusion. And I gotta admit that I was confused most of the week. I knew what I was supposed to be doing, but every time I tried to get it done, I wasn't getting it accomplished. But by the end of the week, God brought me to the point is, you gotta get ready for your sermon. This should have been done a month ago. I drug my feet, if you will, but it's been hard for me because I've been busy doing other stuff. I can't get back to what I need to do. Oh, doing this one? Oh, spit. Sorry, folks, I do this every time. I'll miss up one or the other. It's special music. Thank you. <laughs>
Thank you, Marvel. You know, for me, it seems like the last couple of years, the confusion keeps getting worse. I've been up here I don't know how many times, and I know the special music or the children's story, and I always make a mistake. But this week's been especially confusing because I had a, a funeral to take care of and some other things that, that kind of got my mind going because the funeral was for somebody that many of the people in this church know, Dorothy Paris. We finally laid her to rest this week. And for me, it's an emotional time because my wife brought a harem into my life when I married her. There's a wonderful ladies in this church that I'm familiar with. I get called to help them out and do different things. And I'm being taught by God that I still have a purpose for you. There's one back there, my granddaughter. God used Alice and I to bring her up in the way she should go. And I'm, I'm praising God for every step that's going on. The sermon this week is, is about guided by God. We live in a complicated world and we all need guidance at some time or another. Like I was telling the kids about the trees, you know, the seeds and the flowers and what goes on. Each one of us has been given seeds by God. And those seeds are there to be planted in the community around us with his light and his water of uh, life, it can grow into something special. And that's what he wants us to do. He asks us to make disciples of people around us. If we don't get out there and knock on a door or stop somebody in the, in the supermarket aisle and tell them about our best friend Jesus, we're not planting the seed that he's given us. And we don't want them to die. We don't want them to pass away. So we need to use our faith that he's given us to further his work. Some of our decisions are so important that they could affect our entire future. Have you ever thought about some of the things you do that you don't really understand what's going on, but you know that they affect your family they fit outreaching to the community around us, some of the decisions you make. Now, one of the ones that I can bring up, uh, I was called on when I lived downstate to vote on closing the, the school down there. The hardest decision I ever make in my whole life, because that's not our school, that's God's school. And we're turning down and shutting off the opportunity he has to reach his light around the community to bring many more people to the stone of grace. I, and that's not, I don't want to beat my drum, but I re, would not vote to close our school on the hill. I wouldn't. And if it come up again, I still wouldn't because that avenue up there closes the door to God. He has an outreach in this area that that school, these young people come out of here like I was telling the kids, Share the seed that God give you with the community around you. It's to teach them special messages that God wants us to share. Excuse me if, I, if I'm getting a little slow today. My eyes don't work well. Some of the decisions are so important and we're faced with different ones every day of our life. Something will come up. Maybe our budget's kind of low. We don't have money to buy a battery, and the battery went out. So some of us are lucky to have a battery charger. Stick it on there, get it started, and go somewhere. And don't shut it off when we get there. I don't know if anybody has ever done that. I've done it several times. Or if I had a flat tire, I'd get it aired up at home by a little compressor. I'd drive into town at the gas station. I'd air it up again so I could get back home. But God give us the wisdom. He taught us that, hey, if you do this, things will work for you because I'm leading you. And some of them, we meet somebody in the supermarket 
And I don't want to pick on Jack because I, I enjoy what he said. How is your faith today? How many people open up in ways they never would have talked to you before just because you said what Jack said? But it wasn't Jack, was it Jack? It was Christ talking with the Holy Spirit to his heart. That you need to reach out to that person. Sometimes it might be just a smile. You smile at somebody, they might be feeling low. Something's happened in our life we don't understand. But Christ always opens the door if we'll step through it. Always. Never fails. You get a hitchhiker on the road, and I realize with the environment we have now, some of us don't stop for a hitchhiker because you never know what's going to happen with that hitchhiker. What I like to do, I don't close my eyes, but I ask God, would you impress in my heart if it's okay to pick up this person? Because he'll tell you the answer. He always does. Okay, we're going to lose my place here. It could be that we've done everything that we can with research on a certain subject, but yet we still don't know the answer. Where's the answer? It's right here. Every answer to everything in our lives is contained in this book. And we have to, and I, I use this word not sparingly, we have to pick this book up and read it for ourselves. We heard a little bit this morning in our Sabbath school class about some of these churches out there that say, you don't need to read this. Just listen to what I'm telling you. Don't listen to me. Pick up your Bible, look and see if what I told you is in there. Because if it's not, then you don't need to listen to me anymore. But I want to take my life and serve Christ and share the message to everyone about him. Because the time is short and we only have a, maybe even a few hours until Christ steps through the clouds and we got one more soul to win for Christ. And they're out there. Maybe it's your next door neighbor you never talked to. And I got to say that for our neighborhood. I see them once in a while and I wave at them as they go by being friendly. But how many times have I went down the street, knocked on the door, and, and just introduced myself and said, I'm glad you're in our neighborhood. I haven't done it very often. Once in a while I do. If we get a new neighbor, I'll go down and visit. And some of them, I don't even know who they are. People change. We've got new people moved in with young people, children out there. I don't even know them. I have no idea. But God wants us to be familiar with everyone around us so that if we see one hurting soul, just one, we can share what he's put in our heart to maybe enlighten that person's life and draw them to him. And that's the most important thing we can do in our lives. Maybe our problem just seems beyond our solving. And if you ever had something that's happened You've worked on it, you took something apart, you know what's wrong with it, but you can't fix it. Sometimes it's a hurting problem with somebody in the family. Somebody's said something that's hurt their feelings or something's happened in their life that they can't handle. But some of the things that we handle in our lives, God give us the steps, if you will, going through that problem that we can share with somebody who's hurting out there. And it's in our hearts because Christ put it there. There's only one person, and I, I say person, it's not really a person, or he is a person, or he was a person, how's that? He's God. He gives us every avenue that we need to make it through life. We can't do it by ourselves. I've had times I've been out, broken down on the road. I didn't have a tire iron. How are you going to get a wheel off without a tire iron? Not going to work. And I said, Lord, I, I, don't have, I don't have any way of fixing this. And I'll be, I've had people stop and help me with the tire iron out of their car. One time it was a lady. Now, I got I to gotta let you know that Many times, ladies don't stop to help somebody. So it had to be the Spirit of God in that person for her to stop 
and lend me her tire iron so I could change my tire. What a blessing it's been. Many of us don't even see the angels that are around us, and, now, and I'll put it that way, because she was an angel. She got, I put the tire iron back where it was in her car. She disappeared, I'd never seen her again. How many of us have had something like this happen? There, I see a bunch of hands coming up. It happens, God puts people in our lives when we're in need. We, we're on our knees. Lord, I can't do it. I gotta have some help from somewhere. And what did he do? He sends that angel of mercy to help us. Each one of us have different stories we can tell and we could spend all day talking about the stories, but we can keep it in our mind and our heart that God has shared something special with us. He's given us a wonderful promise from in Psalms 32, 8 through 11 to encourage us when we're in need of his guidance. I want to read it again to you. We add it for scripture reading. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye upon you. Do not be like the horse of the, or the mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by the bit and the bridle, or they will not come to you. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the one who trusts in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing all you are upright in heart. I don't know how many people have had horses or goats or, or mules that they've had in their farms. But the horse, unless you go up to them and you gentle them down with treats and, and just be kind to them, and put that bridle on him to be able to guide him around, he's not going to listen to you. He's going to fall around. And I'll say she, too, because there's female animals out there. They won't listen. Nothing you can do. If you've been around them long enough, and, and through God's spirit, that animal might come when you whistle to him. But other than that, you have to be in there just like God is in each one of our lives. He's there. It says he keeps his eye upon us. As a parent, and I'll use this as an analogy, as a parent, you can't tell your children to do something and not keep track of them. You watch them, make sure they're obeying what you're asking them to do. We as God's children also are instructed through his word of what he wants us to do. And all the while, he's keeping his eye on each and every one of us to make sure that we're following and obeying. Why? Because he loves us. He wants to be assured that whatever we do is in his plan for us. We don't know what, what the future holds for each and every one of us. We brought it in the past that we could walk out the front door of the church and somebody could be going out of control and run us down right in front of the doors. We don't know. So what do we need to do? We need to heed his instruction to be watching every minute and to prepare our heart for the blessed return of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The source of the promise is the Almighty God in heaven. He promises lots of things in his word. We see some of the prophecies that come into this book. How many of them come true? Each and every one, he tells us, it's going to happen. So what has that done for us? It's taught us that we can trust him with everything we have because he's given us everything. Can you imagine if, and I'm going to pick on Jack again, if you were asked, like Abraham was, to sacrifice your son. i got to speak for myself. I have, I have had four sons. I would be hard spent to put him on the altar and, and destroy him. But Abraham had the faith of the word of God because he was so close to God that whatever God told him, he knew it was going to be right. We see the case of Martha and Mary. When it come to their brother Lazarus being, being dead from a fit or whatever he had, the illness. 
I believe it was Mary said, I know that he'll be coming back in the last day. We all have that assurance if we're keeping right with Christ. That last day, each and every one of us will step forth from the grave and we'll be on our trip to heaven to where the saints are already. We got Moses and Elisha. These people are up there waiting for us. They're, they're overjoyed to the fact that God has put his son there to draw us to that throne of grace in heaven. I can't wait to get there. I don't know about you. I heard this song a, while, a few years back. Um, new song is a group. It was about Jesus. His arms are stretched out wide, waiting for each one of us to come to heaven. I want to, I want to have that hug. I can't wait for that hug. And I know that he promises in his word that I'm going to get that hug. A while back, I must say more than 30 years ago, I talked to this one person in my former church about the grapes. And as a kid, you hear about the giants. You're not thinking about this guy that's 12 feet tall or whatever. You're thinking of a giant. This guy, is, his head's on the ceiling up there. So, okay. He talked about the, the two uh, guards that came back and brought the grapes with them. They had two of them carrying them on a, on a rod. I'm thinking this grape for a giant got to be this big, the size of a basketball. Now, I got ridiculed a lot because I really believed in my heart that there was a grape the size of a basketball. And when I read God's word and he promises me things, I know there's going to be a great, even if it's only one, just for me, the size of a basketball. But I also had another lady that was one of the elders of our church. She come up with a sermon and she's talking about this grape, the size of a basketball. Now, I don't know if she heard that from me, was trying to inspire me, but she said it. I'm thinking, maybe I'm not wrong. Maybe that basketball-sized grape is there. And Jesus says in his word, whatever you ask for, I will give to you. So I know if it's only one, it's going to be there. The source of the promise is Almighty God, the creator of the ends of the earth, who has all knowledge and power is the one who makes this promise. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. This is a personal com commitment from the Lord God to each and every one of us to fill that spot in our heart knowing that he's teaching us in the way we should go and he wants us to follow. Is he going to hold you with manacles on you? to keep you from following I'll pray to the evil one? No. He gives each and every one of the choice to take and heed what he asks us to do. I'm, I'm glad to say, and I'm not perfect. I sin often. And I think everyone here got to admit it's the same thing. I make mistakes. We all make mistakes. But God cares enough that he's right with us every step of the way. And maybe I think he's even praying for us when we look like we're getting astray. He's praying that we make the right choice. And one of them right choices, like I asked, said before about somebody hitchhiking, the right choice is God says, I put this person for you. I can think of one time when I was younger and uh, I tried to find a job out west and I couldn't get one. Well, I didn't know what to do. I stayed out there for three months. It wasn't working for finding a job. I went 60, 70 miles a day traveling around in Colorado. I couldn't find work. I prayed about it. I want to be with my family. They're back, back in Michigan. What am I going to do? God, you're going to make an avenue. I woke up one morning. I had a duffel bag, one of the army duffel bags. I put all my stuff in it with 25 cents. I got on the road, put my thumb out, and headed home. Well, our home isn't here. 
but it was with my family. Our home is up there. And the Son of God is standing at the gates waiting to give us that hug to admit us into that heavenly kingdom above. You can't imagine how beautiful it must be up there. Especially because his light shining too to each and every one of us if we'll keep on line with him. He's teaching that in his word. The promises that are there, they never fail. If you ask for something, it might not come in the exact way you want it, but the answer is there. And sometimes, unfortunately, what we feel is that answer is no. But when we sit down and we, I don't know, you want to pencil down some of the reasons why he said no, we find that he knew that it wasn't right for us. He knew the direction we were going was going to lead us astray. If you have a young person, you tell them not to do something and they obey you, or if they don't, and he doesn't force us to obey him. What happens when you don't watch him? You don't keep your eye on him. What happens? If they were troublemakers before, you got them straightened out for a, a time, but all of a sudden that troublemaker is going to start at it again because they liked the trouble they were in. It's not right, but it happens. I don't want to go in this direction with myself because I don't want to speak so much about myself. I used to ride with bikers. Now, there wasn't a whole lot that they didn't do. I mean, they went and did some unseemly stuff. And they called me Goody Two Shoes most of the time. Oh, there was another name, but I'm not going to share it because it's not right. These guys would go to a bar and they'd get fooling around, they get in trouble and they get in fights, and I would grab them and haul them out. I would take them out. God put me in that group for a reason because I'm going to tell you this, half of the people I was riding with, and there was 18 of them, are now in the church. Not Maybe not our church, but they're in a church. Two of them are pastors. Now, did I do something? I don't think so. I think God used me as a, as a, a witness to draw these people to him. And I'm sure some of you, if you sit down and think of all the things that's happened in the past that you talked to somebody or shared with somebody, you'll find out that his influence through you saved them from, from the reckless life that many people have around us. Okay. If we will come to him, seeking and believing in him, he will give us instruction and teaching for whatever situation we're facing. And he never makes a mistake. Have you noticed that in your life, some of the things that's happened? God will, will lead you in a direction. You weren't thinking about that direction. But what happens? You go in a direction that God's put on your heart and you find out it worked out. For me, I can say this. I've got into things that I, I felt were wrong, and I said, God, I need your help because I can't make this decision on my own. Being, being an adult, and I'll pick on Jack again, as an adult, there's decisions that we make each and every day of our life I'm not prepared to make. But I'm glad that God is right here behind me and given me the thought that the decision is right for him, not for me, for him. We got things that go on in our lives. We have no idea what's going on around us. We hear things about our government doing different, I will say shady deals because they are. They feed us a line in the newspapers and that. We don't know what they're doing, but we find out sometime down the road, like this Watergate and all that stuff. These guys are being watched all the time, going in the wrong directions. And each one of us as a Christian in God's Seventh-day Adventist church are being watched all the time. 
If somebody seen me out doing the lawn mowing on Sabbath from where I live, these people know me. They're not going to see me out there mowing the lawn unless I'm down to the neighbors helping them. I'm not doing it at home because I'm serving him as best I can. And I love the people in this church, how much they teach me, and it's because God's working in each one of their lives. It's a divine commitment made by God who never fails to keep his word. We never have to worry that he will not do as he said because he speaks and acts from within his nature and he is always faithful. Can you imagine what it would be like, and I don't know where I'm going this direction, when he said, let there be light. It's dark. There's nothing out there. But yet, if his son walked into this room, we couldn't see. We'd be blinded. But it's that marvelous light that we need so that we can make it safely to that kingdom above. It encompasses everything we need to know and to make the right choices in our lives. First of all, he promised to instruct us with the truth in verse 8. The truth, what is the truth? That Jesus is the Son of God and everything he says he's going to do. So that teaches me that whatever I do, I need to be faithful to him who's giving me his word that he's going to be true. The world offers us, offers us a direction that are full of error, but the Lord's guidance always leads us to the right way and the right time. Some of the things are going on when we read the Bible, and I've heard it said before, and many of us have, Jesus came at the right time, just like it was foretold. The, the gates of heaven opened wide, and those the angels come and told him, say, listen, Jesus is born. He's, he's here. The shepherds in the field, the, these, these people were looked down upon because they were lowly shepherds. Dirty, dirty people where they smelled like sheep, and, and they weren't looked upon as great people. But when the star come upon them, and the angel talked to him. They came to worship Jesus. That's why we're here today, to worship Jesus. We're being led by God in a way that we, some of us don't understand. We even have the, the disciples that didn't know what they were hearing. They had no idea. Christ told them, in three days after I, I'm dead, I'm coming back. They didn't believe him. Are we, like the disciples, blinded by what's going on? We don't believe? Or do we understand what God's word said? Every page is a truth. We can count on what he tells us, each and every one of us. It's a special honor to know that God is on my side. And I know that many of you here have that same thing. I'm glad God is on my side. Help me to reach out to the community out there that's in the darkness. Help me to share your message to this one more soul so that Jesus can come to take us home. Teaching. When we open his word, the Lord teaches and helps us to understand what the scriptures mean. However, having information is just the beginning to a benefit from it. We must apply what we've learned to the situation we're facing. Each day we get into different circumstances. Now, I'm, not, I'm, I'm gonna pick on somebody else. Howard, when he, when he retired from his job, he had to make decisions. Am I gonna be able to take my retirement money and make ends meet? What did he do? Him and Sue worked together and depended on God because God knew what was right for Howard. He needed to be taken to a rest spot so that he can draw closer. We've been blessed because Howard and Sue are here. Many messages that they share with me, 
I would have never heard them anywhere else. And I'm not going to share some of the messages that we've talked about because they're between us. God knows each one of our hearts. There's things in my past that I can share with other people out there. The loss of my first wife, uh, my mother, my dad, family members. Why did, he, why did he do this? Why did he let them go to sleep? And this is only my view, okay? I don't want anybody to go off the deep end on this. I believe that people are put to rest because God knows they're not strong enough for what's coming ahead for us. And maybe many of us are not going to be strong enough. And he's going to allow us to be put to sleep, like your word says, to sleep until his son comes to resurrect us. And we can be in that heavenly kingdom above. Where else would we want to be? I want to see Jesus. How about you? He, he gives us promptings so we won't suffer. Something will come up and we're driving down the road. Now, you know, I'm going to go back to Howard. If you're going down the road and you, you felt this thumping or you heard this noise, it's going, rrr, 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 rrr. what do you think is going on? You're getting a flat tire. He lets you know about that flat tire so it didn't go flat and your car goes out of control. He give you a warning to wake you up that you need to take care of this now before something happens. I know, I know when I was traveling with my dad, come up to my grandmother's in Petoskey. We were driving down a freeway, and I'm, I'm looking, and across the medium comes this truck tire. Now, the 24-inch truck tire is a pretty good one, coming at you at 65 miles an hour. And it's bouncing down through the median, up into the road where my dad's at. I don't know if he's seen that tire or what happened, but he swerved to miss that tire coming across in the lane. I think God gave him a message, hey, something's happening. And he heeds each one of us with a message that something's happening. And it tells us in the book of Revelation that something's happening. The earthquakes, the famines, the pestilence, all these catastrophes are happening. That's a message. And we need to learn from that message to draw closer to Christ. Each and every one of us have the message. We need to pick it up and read it. Make it part of our lives. We're supposed to be in a mode of constant prayer. When I first heard that, I'm thinking, man, I'm thinking, my eyes got to be closed so I can't be driving down the road and praying. But you can. Because God gives you a mind that you can think about this stuff and he understands and he's what you're saying to him. Sometimes we don't have to say a word. He knows what's going on. He knows everything that we say, everything we do. But there's one person or entity, if you will, that doesn't know what's going on up here. Satan, he doesn't know. He, he's seen your mannerisms in the past. He knows your habits and that's what he works on. Well, he's got trouble with I'll say Coca-Cola. He drinks lots of Coca-Cola. Coca there's caffeine. It's not good for us. Satan knows that, so he puts at every avenue a bottle of Coca-Cola or a sign that shows Coca-Cola that draws us away from God. How can we obey God when Satan's doing this to us? That mode of constant prayer. God... I can't do it without you. I need you every moment of my life. Every day I want to wake up and see your smiling face in front of me. And I want to be your hands and your feet to get out there and light up the world where your son at the present is trying to reach. And it's through each and every one of us here. Each and every one of us here have family members. And I realize that I'm, I, I'm not poking fingers at anybody. I don't want nobody to feel guilty. We have an obligation to God. Even if it's just say one word that will draw that family member that doesn't believe in God or doesn't want to follow God 
to point them in the direction. And if we ask God, he'll give us that word that we need to share with others. And we can say it without hesitation and be proud that he gave it to us. I'm going to ask a couple questions here at the end. Are we going to be stubborn like the mule and the horse that doesn't follow? They got to be held around with a halter in the rain. Or are we going to listen to God speaking to our hearts and obey him? Follow him each and every day of our life and share his message. Or do we reap the consequences that happen when we don't obey? We don't follow. And he's not harsh. He's not going to force you to do it. That's something special that we've been given here on this planet. The choice to make the right decision. To follow God as he's asked us to do. And why? As a wife or a husband, even sons and daughters. Why do you heed what mom or dad or our husband or our spouse say? Why? Because he gave us love and we love that person so much that whatever they ask for, we want to please them, just like our Heavenly Father does. We have a great and wonderful God in heaven that loves us always and forever. And he wants to stand in the gate and watch us come through with a wonderful smile that he gave us with the love that he shared through his son. Let's bow our head for prayer. Dear Most Gracious and Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. Lord, I ask in a special way that your message might reach out to somebody that needs your message today. Help our hearts and our minds fill with that joy of your Son's soon return. And help us to be that beacon of light in this community that needs to be shown so that many more people can come to heaven to be with you and the Father. Amen. Our closing song today is number 482, Father Lead Me Day by Day, number 482. My granddaughter picked out the words or the, the songs for this uh, sermon today. As I was so confused, I couldn't, I couldn't come up with any. And her and her grandmother started singing. Well, I know the, I know the music. Okay, that's a good one. And they give me the, give me the message for it. So, number four Sing it for me because I can't. All right. When I'm tempted to do wrong, make me steadfast, wise, and strong. And when all alone I, I stand, shield me with thy mighty hand. Okay. May
you, everyone, for putting up with me. <laughs> May God bless you the rest of the Sabbath day and lead you on to that heavenly kingdom above. Thank you.